Oscar award-winning filmmaker Michael Moore. He talks about the candidates, the Democratic candidates for president and their position on health care. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Are there presidential candidates that you do feel are putting forward a, an alternative? Well, yes. I mean, there's, well, first of all, nobody's being very specific other than Edwards uh, uh, in terms of an actual plan, and his is, an, is not a good plan. Um, you know, I don't, Obama's plan is, is not as specific, and certainly it, it's full of the same flaws that the Edwards and the Hillary old plan had. Uh, Kucinich has is closest to the right idea, uh, and and of course he keeps you know saying you know nonprofit or whatever, but I, I'd like to I, I kind of don't want to use that word anymore, and I wish that, that Dennis wouldn't use that because Kaiser. Uh, permanent is a nonprofit. Blue Cross is a nonprofit. In fact, the Sacramento Bee that criticized you said, "Don't you understand that Kaiser Permanente is a nonprofit? So oh, why say this is a for-profit industry?" Well, no. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, it's not just the for-profit. That's why I, I say that, that essentially you don't want any private uh, insurance companies involved, and that whether they're for-profit or nonprofit, because. But when I say profit, you have these huge nonprofits. That are, go under the guise of nonprofit, but they're all about profit. They're all about uh, making money uh, for themselves and for their executives, and, and what they make is is obscene. And so, uh, I favor the removal of all private uh, insurance companies. I don't know if Kucinich uh, goes that far. I don't. I don't know really uh, if any of the legislation that I've read uh, goes that far, because they all have a component where they, they will allow the private insurance companies to still be involved. So you're talking about single payer? Yes. Do you see a distinction between single payer and universal coverage? Well, uh, well, yes, of course there's a distinction, because first of all, let me tell you, look, look, they're all going to say universal coverage. By the time of the ele election, by the primaries, I'm sure all the Democrats are going to be using that word, universal coverage for everyone, coverage for everyone. Listen, a lot of their plans, what all they're going to do is they're going to take our tax dollars and put them into the pockets of these insurance companies. We need to cut out the middleman here. The government can run this program. Uh, they, uh, they do it quite well in these other countries. Uh, you know, if you take the, the top 25 countries, and, and if we were the only one not doing something of the 25, uh, are we trying to say that the other 24 is just screwing up and we're, we're, the, we're, the, we're the smart ones here? I don't think so. I think it's, you take a country like Canada, their overhead, their administrative cost to run their national program takes up about 1.7 percent of their whole budget. Uh, the average uh, insurance company in this country will spend anywhere from 15 to 30 percent on overhead, administrative costs, uh, paperwork, bureaucracy. Uh, that can be brought way down when, when the government does it. But of course, <clears throat> the Republicans and even some of the Democrats have done a good job convincing the American people that government is bad, government will just mess it up. And as Al Franken said a few weeks ago, I heard him say, they, they run on that platform of the government is bad, we'll mess things up, then get elected and spend the next four years proving themselves right. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting on over 500 stations around the country and the largest public media collaboration in the United States, as well as stations around the world. I'm Amy Goodman. As we conclude our interview with Academy Award-winning filmmaker Michael Moore, in this segment, well, we play a clip of Sicko. Michael visits a British doctor in his office at the NHS, that's National Health Service Hospital, and at his home. So you have like a family practice? So. Yeah, it's an NHS practice. We have nine doctors within that practice. And You're paid for by the government? Yeah. Paid for by the government. So you yeah. work for the government? Oh, yeah, You're absolutely. You're a government-paid government doctor. So working for the government, you, you probably have to use public transportation? Uh, uh, no, so I have, a, I have a car that I use and, you know, I drive. An old work. beater. You live in a kind of rough part of town or? Uh, I mean, I, I live in a terrific part of town. It's called Greenwich. It's a, it's a lovely house. It's a, it's a three-story house. Uh, how much do you pay for that? <laughs> 550,000. Yeah, so... Pounds. Yeah. So, a million dollars. Yes, absolutely. So doctors do not, in America do not necessarily have to fear having a universal health care. No, I think if you want to have two or three million dollar homes and four or five nice cars and six or seven nice televisions, then maybe, yeah, you need to practice somewhere where you can earn that. Well, the, 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 AMA, uh, the AMA in this country has you know, got all the doctors convinced if we go to socialized medicine, 
uh, you know, they're going to be in the poorhouse. And that just isn't true. The doctors we met in Canada, the doctors we met in Britain and France are living quite well. And I even go to the home of one of them in Britain, as you mentioned. Uh, he's living in a million dollar home. He's driving an Audi. Uh, you know, he's living the yuppie life. Uh, I hope the doctors that go to see my movie uh, will walk out of there going, oh, at least our good life can be, can be protected under socialized medicine. Nobody wants to take away their big house. Skid Row, Michael Moore? Yeah, the opposite of the big house <laughs> doctors live in. Well, as you know, I mean, I think you've covered this, uh, uh, patients uh, in Los Angeles um, who can't pay their bill at the hospital. Hospitals have been dumping them on Skid Row for some time now. They just get them out of the hospital, sometimes right in their hospital gown, put them in a taxi and tell the taxi to take them to Skid Row and drop them off. And sometimes the taxi drivers have to push them out of the car. And, uh, you got videotape. Yes, we have actual security cam footage of uh, a Kaiser patient being dumped on the side of the curb uh, uh, by uh, the, the taxi that Kaiser hired to bring this woman and just dump her with no shoes uh, out in the middle of the street in her hospital gown. Very sad. And you sit there and you watch this and you can't believe this is the United States of, Amer of America. This is what we, this is how we treat uh, people. I mean, I just, I think when people see this movie, they're going to go, okay, this has gone too far and, uh, and, and these people are going to have to be stopped. Michael, in the film, you talk about the AMA, you talk about the uh, pharmaceutical industry, the insurance industry. On your website, you feature their preparations for this film coming out. How are they dealing with SECO? Uh, <laughs> well, they, at first, I mean, they've been, uh, I'll, go, I'll jump back to just before we started making the movie, where it, it, uh, no insurance company would insure me or the film uh, because they knew it was going to be about insurance. So I had a difficult time just, you know, getting insurance for this thing. Uh, then they started a number of things internally that they did to warn their employees, do not talk to Michael Moore. If you talk to Michael Moore, you're going to be in serious trouble. And in fact, they did training sessions on how to deal with me should I show up at their company. Uh, they had a, Pfizer had a Michael Moore hotline. You dial this number if you see him. And this is all this crazy Have you stuff. dialed it? Oh yeah! In fact, I, uh, last year I put it. I gave uh, a couple years ago. I put it on the internet, just so I told people just dial this number. It's the Michael Moore hotline at Pfizer. Just call them up and 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 just say, he's in the building. He's in the building. You know, just to they they eventually had to shut the line down because so many people were messing around with them. But <laughs> so what do they say? How do they say to deal with you? Um, in these memos. Uh, uh, don't run, don't flee, don't put your hand over the camera. Um, the, uh, they hired a psychological profiler, one of the companies, to, to tell the CEO how, how my mind ticks. So in other words, like how to get me off on the subject. So if I happen to show up with a microphone, you know, the psychological profiler said, we've determined if you can just get him to talk about Detroit sports teams, uh, he'll, uh, he'll stop talking to you about the HMOs. And I read that and I thought, that's good. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm Amy Goodman. Our website's democracynow.org. Check it out for the full interview. Thanks for joining us.